Hello, Jesus Christ is Lord. Therefore, let not your heart be troubled. This is the good news from Epaso. So we welcome you to today's program also. I say stay tuned and see what the Lord God Almighty is going to tell you today. Welcome, honey, please welcome our audience. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us again. You are wonderful and you are fearfully made. The Lord is with you. And that's why you love him. So continue to love the Lord and continue to call other people to watch with you. Thank you. Wonderful. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our heavenly, gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that because we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we have been authorized and have the power to speak your word into the life of your children. And as we speak this word, O oh gracious Father, exalt your name, magnify your name, that this word will be productive in their lives and they will experience the goodness of the Lord in their health, in their finances, in whatever they set their hands to do, so that the glory will be yours. Thank you, Father, as we bless each and every one of us today in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Our topic today is this. Those in the flesh cannot please God. Those in the flesh cannot please God. So today we are going to find out from the scriptures what does it mean to be in the flesh and what does it mean to be in the spirit. So we are not going to give you our ideas or what we think about it. Let us hear from the word of God what it means to be in the flesh or to be in the spirit. So we are going to read this morning or this today from the book of Romans chapter 8. We are going to, to read verses, um, verses 5 to 8 and then verse 14. Verse 5 to 8, I'm going to read it. It says, For they that are after the flesh do not mind the things, do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Honey, what is this telling us? Hallelujah. Hey, this is telling us, and remember, we will first um, address our brethren, those that have met Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. This is for you. And for those that are not in Christ yet, thank you for watching. This is the best day of your life. So as you listen at the end, we will welcome you into the kingdom of God. And you know that you have killed two birds with one stone. So what are we talking about here? The Lord is letting us know. Those Christians who are in the flesh. See, you can be a Christian and be in the flesh. And how, how does that happen? And those that are in the flesh cannot please God, cannot see God. So in the flesh, you look at it, what does that mean? That means your flesh, before even we get there, we are three parts. We are spirit, soul, and body. See, those that are in Christ Jesus, note that. So we have the spirit in us. We are living in the body, and we have soul. And the soul, a lot of us know, know what it is. That's your will, your mind. That's where you make your decision, your emotions. So now, if you allow your flesh to control you, then you have a big problem. You cannot see God. How do you allow your flesh to control you? The flesh and the soul are supposed to align with your spirit, where the spirit of God is dwelling. If you are going out there following the world, the way they do things, 
going out there, ignoring God, ignoring the Holy Spirit in you, doing things because you want to do them, because it feels good, then you are in the flesh. So are you motivated by the Spirit of God or by the flesh? Because if you are motivated by the Spirit, if your soul, your emotion, your will is controlling, is being controlled by the body, your flesh, then you need to repent of that quickly and let the Spirit of God take over in your life. We will talk more on this because this, the flesh leads to <clears throat> death. Hallelujah. So what does it mean to be in the flesh? You have a mind, you have a spirit, and you have a body. You see, if you let the circumstances around you, you have what you see, what you hear, what you feel, let your mind rule you. Then you take the information from what is around you to control you. You are living in the flesh. When your body feels sick, and then you say, oh, I'm sick, because your body has told your mind that you are sick, and then you accept it, you are living in the flesh. When the Spirit of the Lord says that by his stripes you are healed, and that the Spirit of God in you is quickening your mortal body, instead of depending on that and confessing that over your body, you are accepting what your body is telling you, letting your mind react to the environment because of what you are feeling. You are living in the flesh. If you look at yourself, your finances, it looks low. And then you say, well, I don't have money. But the Lord says that they are giving you power to get wealth. And when he created you, remember when God created you, he created you for one purpose. He said, I'm creating you as my image and likeness to be in this earth. Replenish it. So if there is anything which is lacking in your life, replenish it. So if instead of replenishing it with the word of God, calling prosperity in your life, calling health in your life, instead you are looking at the circumstances, the situation, the economy, the politics, and your life is being ruled by what you see, you are living by, by the flesh. And those who are living that way can never experience the spiritual dimension of prosperity and health and power that those who live in the spirit receive or live by. So it's your choice today. To, you know the difference. When a situation faces in your life, ask yourself, am I going to handle this in carnally? Or am I going to handle it spiritually? To handle it carnally, you use the word of God. What does, sorry, to handle it spiritually, you use the word of God. What does the word of God say regarding this situation? You, are, you operate on that word of God. But if you look at this thing and want to handle it the way the world is saying, the way the situation is just saying, you are living carnally. And what does it tell us? By doing that, you are killing yourself. And it's possible. Wake up. Let us know that we are no longer carnal beings. Say, so we are no longer carnal. We are spiritual. We are God's image and likeness. We live by the spirit and not by the flesh. Right, honey? Right indeed, right indeed. So now God tells us, or the, yes, the word of God tells us, the spirit and the soul, the body, they need to work together. And when we allow our minds, our feelings to control, see the, 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 the soul there, your will, you have a will. And that will need to be subject to God. Your emotion needs to be subject to God. Somebody can be gossiping about you, saying anything or doing anything to hurt you. So we have the, you can feel it. You can say, okay, well, because they did this to me, I'm going to retaliate. Now that's working in the flesh. Your mind wants their, their body to go and fight them. But your body and your mind, when they collide, when they, are, when they gang up against the spirit, that's when you are in a very bad place. So what do you do all the time? Purpose in your heart to tell your body, you do not decide for me. You do not control my life. So you do not. Now, I want you to start listening to the spirit. That's what I do. That's what we do. Sometimes you, your flesh wants to just take over. You just command your flesh, bring it under subjection to the obedience of Christ. 
Tell it, body and soul, you listen to the spirit. Listen, I do not obey you. I am spiritual and therefore I obey the spirit. So when we do that, we are pleasing God. But when you follow what your mind is telling you, how you're feeling, and then you want to go and punch somebody because <laughs> when you do that, you, you are going contrary to what God said. It's, you know, it feels good to do that. Believe me, we've been there, we, we've been there done that, and got a t-shirt, somebody will say. But at the end of the day, it profits you nothing. You have become a dead person right there. You don't want to be a dead Christian. You want to be a live Christian, the Christian that follows the spirit, the Christian that follows. When, when we say spirit here, that's the word of God. We follow the word of God. It might not feel good. It might not, it might not be what your flesh wants or what your mind is telling you. Those are under subjection to the obedience of the spirit of God inside you. And that's the fight. That's the fight of faith. That's what we do 24-7. Because your mind will want to, and every time you get your mind, your flesh, to work together with the Spirit of God, you have conquered. And that's what, where we are aiming and what our mission is. We stay there. Because 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, The natural man cannot receive anything from the Lord. That's the you can ask yourself, where is the church today? Where is a lot of us? In the natural. We need to stop being in the natural so that we can start ruling and reigning over circumstances, over demonic uh, powers, so that we can start pleasing God and living their life more abundantly. Very good. You see, the goal in life is to please God. And you please God by living Expressing him the way he is. You don't please God by dancing or actually singing or fasting. No. He said God rejoices in the prosperity of his children. If you are prospering, you are, you are pleasing God. If you are in perfect health, you are pleasing God. God created the world. He asked you, like we said earlier, that you should replenish. He also asked you to subdue. So if anything is out of line or trying to grow out of line, subdue it. Take over. So that is how you, and how do you take over? With the word of God. The Bible describes the word of God that it is the sword of the spirit. So you have the power in the name of Jesus Christ to replenish. You have the power in the name of Jesus Christ to subdue. You have to learn how to do it. You have to know how to do it. The fact that a child is born in the house of a king gives him the right to become a king, but he's not a king. He got to be trained by people. They got to train him or train him to be a king or how to be a queen. So that, um, that grooming time is necessary for you to take, for him or her to take the place. So for you to be able to operate spiritually, you got to learn how to operate spiritually. And the Holy Spirit is here to help you. You have the textbook, which is the word of God, which is the Bible. So you have to learn how to let your spirit be in charge and not your body to dictate. Let, let your body and your mind work and your spirit is there idle. You will perish. You will be in trouble all, all along because the power that could take you from mediocrity to a place of success is only the spirit. Otherwise, you'll be living by the sweat of your brow. So let us look at Philippians uh, chapter uh, 3, verse 2 to 3. Honey, please, can you read for us? And let us see what this word of God, this spirit tells us on how to live by the spirit. Philippians Phil chapter 3, verses 2 to 3, please. Okay. Philippians 2, 2 to 3. 2 or 3? 3. Ver chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. Finally, my brethren... Rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. Okay. Look out for those dogs. Beware of dogs. Ooh. Beware of dogs. Verse 2. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. 
beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. This is instruction, really. Yes, this is you instruction. See, we he said, he said, beware of people who are giving you wrong information. They tell you God is almighty. God is great. God is greater than the devil. But the next minute they tell you that the devil is after you. That they, you want to run away from the devil. That's a lie from the pit of hell. If God is in charge, God is in charge in, in that he has given you the right to live on earth, to occupy. Remember what he told you. Occupy till I come. You are in charge till I come. Operate till I come. Be responsible till I come. Take care till I come. He did not leave you idle to do it by yourself. He didn't say, okay, figure out how you're going to do it. No. This is how you do it. Use the sword of the spirit, the word of God. Be in charge. Don't listen to those who tell you, well, God is a healer. They're afraid of the mosquito that passes before their faces. They're scared. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. So if you're afraid of anything, it's not the spirit of God. Be bold. You see, the only thing that will activate the power of the word of God in your life is you believing it and acting on it. It is there. But if you do not act on it, it's inactive. It will not work. So don't expect, okay, that's the word of God. You see that and say, okay, let it work. You're not going to work. But when you start declaring, I am prosperous. When you start declaring, the Holy Spirit is in my body, put me in this mortal body. I will never be sick. I will never, no disease or germ that they say is out there will touch my body. And if it touches it, it will die. And you understand one thing. God has backed you up by his word. There's one thing I tell myself. No disease will touch this body. But if it touches it, it will die. I'm not going to get sick. But if I get sick, I'll be healed. If I'm not healed, I'll die. If I die, I go to heaven. So what have I lost? Nothing. That's what I stand on. And I'm bored about it. I say it with all confidence and assurance. I've lost nothing. Because they that are in Christ are equipped forever. I am in Christ, and I will not back up in anything. I'm not afraid of diseases. I'm not afraid of gems. I'm not afraid of anything, because I am in Christ, and he is in me. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, again, this is instructional. Please write down the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 3. You can read the whole thing. And this, is, this epistle is the way we are supposed to live as Christians. So when we put these things in our spirit, in our hearts, in our minds, and meditate on them, then you know how strong you're going to be. See, viruses, whatever it is, epidemic, pandemic, no-demic, whatever, human-demic, it doesn't matter. When you follow what God says, you can never be afraid. Now, when you are afraid, it weakens your immune system. So beware of, look at it, the scripture tells us, beware of dogs. Beware of those people, the false teachers, those ones that will give you doctrines. Follow this doctrine, that doctrine, and then not the word of God. Beware of those ones. Follow the ones that want you to be, okay, God uh, wants you to be poor so that you, you will, you, God does not, that's a lie. Do not follow them. He says, do not follow, the, do not be confident in the, do not ever be confident in the flesh. Flesh, humans, flesh, carnality. So when somebody is telling you what God did not say, a lot of times you buy it. You know why you buy it? Because you don't know the truth. But when you know the truth, you tell them right in their face. It's not in the Bible. Right there, there you tell them, I don't receive that. I don't, anything you receive becomes your own. So beware of what, now also beware of your self-efforts. Don't think, okay, I need to do this. I'm a self-made somebody. I need to get do this by myself. I need to, I need to, I have to. I... Now, when it all depends on you, where is Jesus Christ in the equation? Beware of that mindset. So that is what the Holy Spirit is letting us know today. Call us back to the foundation. Follow the scriptures. Follow the word of God. And how do you follow the word of God if you don't know what the word of God says? That's why God wants us to read this word. This is our manual as Christians. When we follow the word, 
we will never miss it. You know, sometimes I get upset. You get upset when the devil is p trying to put things on you that is, you know, you're like, okay, well, how long is this going to be? But guess what? Be steadfast. Be immovable. <laughs> I just take that right now for myself. Be steadfast, be immovable, and stay on the word of God. Stay on what God says. Jesus has finished it all. And when the devil says, well, but you did, you did this yesterday, so it's the blood of Jesus speaks for me. That's standing by the word of God so that we cannot fall. We cannot lose our, uh, our steps. Let us be the soldiers that stand our guard and stay there and know that. And our weapon is the word of God. As long as you open that mouth, let the word of God come out. Do not speak what the devil wants you to speak. For the victory is ours. Yes, when you open that mouth, you know that the sword, the two-edged sword is coming out of your mouth. And it's going this way and that way, destroying everything in its way and piercing through. And that power is the word of God. So, honey, let us look at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, verse 16 to 18, please. Can you read it for us? Let's Amen. hear that. What does it say? 16 to 18. So, what's the benefit of being spiritually led? Mm -hmm. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud cry of summons, with a shout of an archangel, and with the blast of the trumpet of God. And those who have departed this life in Christ will rise first. Then we... The living ones who remain on the earth shall simultaneously be caught up along with the, with, with the resurrected dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so always through the eternity of eternities, we shall be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. So mm. that's the benefit. After here, you meet with the Lord and you'll be with him forever. But here, you are in charge. Here you have the power. Here you have the authority. When I say this is not going to happen to me, or this is not going to happen to me, or I expect this in my life, I'm believing this to happen. I'm saying it because I've been authorized. The Bible says, whatsoever thing I do, that is whatever thing I say, I do it in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. So when I say it, I say it with confidence because I know nothing can resist that name. There's nothing on this planet Earth. They say everything in heaven, on earth, in the sea, below the, the ground, they're all subject to the name of Jesus Christ. So whatever challenge is in my life, I face it in the name of Jesus Christ and it must yield. It has no choice. So with you. But the only way it will be operative in your life is if you believe, do you believe it. That's all God requires from you. Believe me. If you believe it, you got it made. That's what it is. So the benefit is that when all is said and done, you'll be in the new Jerusalem. Amen? Hallelujah. This is the ultimate benefit for those who, are, who remain steadfast to the end. You walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Father, we thank you because your people, we, your people, we have heard this good news today. And we thank you that you are with us in all that we do. 24-7, you never leave us alone, you never forsake us, your word says so. And we are saying because you, you love us so much, we are declaring today, the Lord is with us. We fear not, we fear not. What can man do to us? Thank you for giving us authority, dominion and power over all. And this is our heritage. Today, my brethren, go in the grace of the Lord, go in the faith of the living God, go and know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We are more than conquerors. Fear not, for the Lord is with you. So my brothers and sisters, you've heard, uh, those who are born again, the body is in your court. You choose, you chose Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. You ask to be forgiven of your sins. You ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life. Now you've got it all. Don't sit down. Occupy till I come. You, you, are, you, are, you are doing what you are doing with the expectancy that he's coming. I'm expecting my Savior to come. But before he comes, this is what I'm going to do. Remember what, if you read the book of uh, 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 Hebrews chapter 11, he told about those people. He said the, 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 dead, the women received their dead back to life. Uh, people conquered armies. They quenched the violence of fire. And in the end, he said they did not receive what they were, expect, they were hoping for. What were they expecting? 
that a Messiah is going to come who is going to redeem Israel. Despite the fact that the Messiah did not come during their time, it did not stop them from doing what they were supposed to be doing. Christ is coming, that's true. Does it stop you from, does it stop you from raising the dead? Does it stop you from healing the sick? Does it stop you from declaring the power of God in this world and achieving success in your life? If you do it, keep doing what you're doing. If it comes before your time or during your time, fine. If it doesn't come, at least you've done your work. Those people did what they were supposed to do, yet the, the, the Messiah did not come during their time. Are you doing what you're supposed to do, or are you just sitting there waiting for the Messiah to come? Do your job. The Messiah will come when he decides. But he has, you have to know what he has asked you to do. Just go ahead and do it. So for those of you who are not born again, who don't understand the power of the Spirit of God, the power of the name of Jesus Christ, we want you today to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is God Almighty who came in the flesh and died for you so that what has held you in bondage from exercising yourself as a child of God, he has removed it. Death came by sin. He has taken away sin from you. So right now, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Honey, lead them. Bring them to the kingdom of God. Thank you, Father God. And thank you, my brothers and sisters. You that are watching today, you are here because God designed you to do so. Therefore, receive this wonderful Jesus in your heart. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. I believe you came and died for me. I ask you to forgive me my sins. I ask you now to be the savior of my life. Be the Lord of my life. I believe God raised you from the dead. Now fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me, Holy Spirit, to live according to the scriptures. Now, because you have made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior now, you are a member of the family of God. Mm -hmm. Begin to read the Bible to know who you are and what you have and the, the power and the work that you have on this earth to do. So we thank God. Father, we thank you because they have come into Christ. They have now thank eternal you, life. They're saved. Hallelujah. Thank you. You are saved and God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Jesus Christ Jesus is Lord. Name. Amen. Do all in the name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. He's Lord. He's Lord.